Time for some uh, historic actual electrical content. Are you? At Bletchley Park in Milton Keynes. So last week I put out a video, uh, some content I don't fucking know, you know what I mean? Asking who the most famous electrician was. There was loads of responses like, I don't know, uh, David Jason was a part of electrician, uh, Rowan Atkinson and all that. But the most famous electrician I'm aware of that no one answered with is a guy that during the war worked here. So if you Google Bletchley Park, which is this, you can see all the World War II buildings there. This is where all the German codes were broke during the war. So if you've ever heard of Enigma, the code for it was broken here, and all the messages were deciphered here. Basically, by the end of the war, the Germans couldn't take a shit without someone knowing what was going off in these buildings behind there. However, as you're probably aware, maybe you're not, because sort of history's erased itself, the German codes were broken by a guy called Alan Turing. It was a massive raving homosexual, but a mathematical genius. And in these buildings behind me, he broke all the German codes by pretty much by hand and being a mathematical genius. This was achieved here by a very long-winded process involving bits of paper and cardboard and all fucking sorts of shit. Yeah, you can Google it if you really want to know. However, some bloke called Tommy Flowers, who was an electrical engineer, he worked for the post office. What you don't realise if you're an electrician is, it weren't always about lights and sockets. Electrical engineering came from telegraph, from phones, and he worked for the post office, and he had the crazy concept that rather than you ringing up and speaking to someone, asking to be put through, that you could have a telephone exchange where it would be done automatically. So come the outbreak of war, no one wanted automatic telephone exchanges because obviously people are fighting and stuff. So he got involved with the idea, the crudely described concept that you could make a system of valves and wires, input the codes that would from the German code machines and then decipher them using logic. And they built that, which I believe is called Colossus. He built that out of parts from telephone exchanges. He also spent quite a considerable amount of his own money on building it, and then it got brought here, where it was replicated numerous times over and sat here for the duration of the war, automatically breaking codes. So basically, it worked, and it went from taking days and days to decipher messages, which is obviously relevant when someone's going to bomb somewhere or do something. He took a concept that took days and made it into hours, using basically valves which are like crude forms of relays and the Colossus, which was obviously called Colossus because it was so fucking massive would now computing wise probably be smaller than the raspberry pi so obviously after all the hardcore work that went into breaking german codes and saving thousands of lives during the war alan turing was banged up for being a gay man and eventually killed himself for being persecuted for being a gay man which is obviously a massive blot and stain on the entire uk government and then Tommy Flowers just went back to the post office to be a normal electrical engineer in the post office, despite having actually invented the first programmable computer. He was awarded £1,000, but he basically got told to keep his fucking mouth shut because all the technology was developed here to develop the first programmable computer, which enables me to chat shit to you on this medium like it is now, was kept a secret. And eventually, the US government reinvented it, pretend they did it, but in fact, it all happened down here from a guy that made telephone exchanges for a living. So just remember, next time someone asks you or inquires about who the most famous electrical engineer in the world is, it's Tommy Flowers. He basically invented every single thing to do with computers that we do now. They had to keep it a secret and couldn't tell anyone about it because of the war. And eventually, in 1998, he went down to the local college here and got a certificate in basic computing, even though he invented this. It's just a shame that all the great people that do great stuff like that, from really bone things like just being an electrician, being an electrical engineer, don't really get remembered very well. He's quite well remembered in my house because I named my son after him. Him. But yeah, generally in the world, Alan Turing, Bill Tutter also worked here, and Tommy Flowers slipped into the bowels of history. And when you ask who the most famous electrician art is, they say Mr. Bean. So yeah, for the for some of the people that message me and say, oh, I'd really like to get in what you're doing, but just an ass basher. So fucking what? If you feel like moving on to something a bit more exciting, do it. Tommy Flowers just worked in the post office designing fucking telephone shit. And eventually in his life, he came here and he invented the fucking first programmable computer in the world, yeah? He invented, developed, come up with the entire concept of a machine where you put things into it and it does maths and gives you something totally different back based on the logic held within its fucking internals. The computing power on that Colossus machine would now fit in a chip the size of a postage stamp, but obviously he was thinking big. But you'll never think big if you just carry on putting it down like it's up in Aunt Bessie's house, will you? See you later. Corendium at the end, yeah? The real hero here is Alan Turing. Tommy Flowers did actually get recognised for a lot of his work from the 80s onwards, was awarded an MBE, and got recognised by various organisations as the fucking Don of computing. However, Alan Turing topped himself because he was a gay persecuted man and was only recently pardoned in the last 10 years and put on a 50. But it's a little bit late now because I don't fucking realise who he is. But in fact, say thousands and thousands and thousands of lives 
during World War II, assisted by Tommy Flowers and another guy called Bill Tutt, who are well worth Googling, and obviously Bletchley Fog is well worth a visit. It's just that I'm here tonight when it's closed, recording this outside because it's a nice on-location piece, whilst security card looks at me like I'm some kind of nutcase, which is why I've retired to my van. Definitely see you later.